Good morning. <laughs> this is Malka Stromer with Janine Noble. Let's see what's going on here for a second. Oh, hi. Hi. Good. <laughs> Malka Stromer and Janine Noble, we're here at Synergy Rehab. Rehab. The office of Dr. Anthony Lee. And we have today, we're really lucky, we have his PA, Kira, here. She is from some state back east. <laughs> She's from Pennsylvania, so she is new out here to us, and she's going to be our knee model today. Awesome. So today, we are going to be demonstrating a diagnostic ultrasound of the knee. Um, Janine will get started with that again. Uh, towards the end of today's webinar, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask, and um, let's get started. All right. Those of you who are, if you're joining in with us, then you probably already know what the knee consists of. We've got, and the thing, the structures that we're going to look at today are, if I got the knee correct, the medial collateral ligament, patella tendon, we have the LCL and the distal IT band here, the meniscus in between, and then Baker cyst, popliteal area. Um, the knee is very nicely visualized with the ultrasound. It's good for a screening to see if you've got ligament tears, if you have um, Baker cyst, if you've got a patella tendon issue. Meniscus, sometimes you can see if the joint space is decreased and the meniscus is extruding from that. For really, for tears in younger people, I still recommend an MRI. You can see this on there, but if you're trying to get real specific, you still may want to go with the MRI. So positioning wise, what I like to do is I like to have the patient seated and the patient's leg in my lap. Now, you can also do this with the patient lying down, put a bolster under the knee and do it that way. I tend to do this, this is how I learned and I, like, I have more control like this. On the other hand, I'm old, so I can get away with doing this kind of thing if you're younger, you know, use your good judgment and try not to be creepy about it, and you'll probably be okay. So anyhow, this way, we've got some good control here. My protocol is to go medial. I'll look at the medial meniscus, the medial collateral ligament, and the pes anserine bursa. Laterally, we're going to go over the lateral meniscus, the distal IT band, and the lateral collateral ligament. Posteriorly, we'll just look for a Baker cyst, which shows up or it doesn't. Anteriorly, we'll do the patellar tendon. Come on down, look at the tuberosity, coming proximal to the distal quad, and then go medial and lateral, looking for effusion in through there. So we are gonna switch over to the ultrasound. And again, we're using our handy Hilserian. I'm gonna take the weed leash off of here. Just one second. Yeah. Yeah. Give a second. Huh. Okay. We have a technical difficulty. We have a technical difficulty here. Hang on one second. There, there, we go. there we go. Perfect. Okay. All right. So we will, there we go, go to large screen. Perfect. And Kira's an excellent patient here. She has stated, do you have any knee issues that you know of? No. Okay. Not that she knows of. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm going to start, if you can see here, I am medial to the knee, you know where the joint is. And just as a matter of when you're first doing it, honestly, if you're feeling down, the joint is a little bit lower than what you think it is. So we're going to go right to the joint. There we go. Look at that cute knee. I am proximal to the left of the screen, distal to the right. Medial joint is right in the middle. Now, the first thing you're going to look for is good joint space. Uh, there is a nice distance between her femur and her tibia. 
femur is on the left, tibia is on the right. The medial collateral ligament, I'm going to just scan through this, going from anterior to posterior, kind of a scooping motion to see what's going on to where I end up posterior in through there. And you can see the nice slice of pie-shaped meniscus. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, pie-shaped meniscus that is right in the middle. Yeah, right in through there. The medial collateral ligament is a small, thin line right through there that goes all the way down. I'm going to come proximal to that up to the attachment at the femoral condyle and then run it distal down, angling a little bit anterior. And again, you can palpate where the three tendons of the pes anterine come in and right through here is the pes anterine bursa. And again, a bursa is a potential space. So unless it's inflamed, you're not gonna see it. So we've got those three there and this looks beautiful. Kira obviously takes care of her knee. A little more gel, gonna go lateral. And when you're doing this, the best way of doing any scan for uh, musculoskeletal and pretty much anything is to have a set protocol. And I follow the same product protocol every time. If the pain's on the lateral side, I still start medial. And that way you make sure that you get everything in there, that you don't leave out any part of it, especially when you're first beginning. Because you start talking to the patient and can easily forget what you're looking at. So I'm gonna go right to the lateral joint. We have, again, femur on the left, tibia on the right, meniscus. Do you mind um, decreasing the depth just a little bit? There you go. All right, a little bit bigger picture there. So off to the left, femur. And see the little bit of irregularity there? Kira's not 20 anymore, and she was a sports girl, so there's a little bit of arthritic change, or just degenerative changes going on through there. Yeah. Um, to the right is the tibia. The distal iliotibial band, go ahead and hit the breeze, runs through here and attaches to the tibia. You can see the insertion right through there. And we'll change, then we'll change angle. So I'm gonna follow that proximal and you can see the nice band right through here. Comes right to, in a straight line down to the tibia. For the lateral collateral ligament, you're gonna angle down just a little bit to the fibular head. And there is the lateral collateral ligament attaching onto the fibular head. Now deep to that is the distal biceps femoris. Just down, right in through there, attaching. So one thing to keep in mind too, the common perineal nerve is in this area. And if patients are complaining of pain that goes down the lateral side of the leg, that numbness tingling kind of thing, kind of look in through this area to see if there's inflammation or if there's scar tissue in through there. And we'll just scan through this. Looks really nice. Her joint space is good in through here. What you, <laughs> what you tend to see too with this is if there is a decrease in joint space, what happens is the meniscus will start to extrude from the joint. So in a generally the older population like me, the joint will start to shrink and the meniscus will come out causing the ligament to uh, distend from the joint, and that can be quite painful. Very nice. All right, next we'll go to the posterior, the popliteal fossa. I'm gonna have the transducer in a short axis across this with the notch to the medial side, and I'm just going directly in the popliteal crease. There are blood vessels right through there. And the bursa, Well, generally pop up. What it looks like is a crescent or kind of a C shape, a crescent moon shape back through there. It's there or it's not. 
and it runs between the gastrocnemius and the soleus. soleus. Thank you. <laughs> We're just checking Kara to see if she knows what she's <laughs> talking about. All right, looks good back through the popliteal fossa. Then we're gonna bend her to flex her knee a little bit, go to the patella tendon, and we're gonna start directly on the patella. If we haven't talked about it before, one thing you wanna do with musculoskeletal is to always give yourself a bony landmark. Putting it just in the middle of something doesn't really give you an idea of where you are. You wanna give yourself a bone to start with, and from there, it, that will direct you. And if you get lost, just go back to the last thing you knew and start from there again. So we have patella at the left of the screen toward the top, patella tendon, running straight down, nice looking patella tendon onto the tibial tuberosity. In Oshkut slaughters, that will be very hypertrophied in through that area, a lot of bony uh, prominence there, but this looks excellent. ACL is down deep. I don't tend to look for ACL. I think that's generally an MRI call. Although you can see with extreme flexion, you can get down in there and there are people that are looking at that more. Then we'll come proximal over the patella into the distal quad. Yeah. I'm gonna increase the depth just a little. Maybe. Yeah, perfect. So we have the distal quad attaching to the patella. I'm gonna run this proximal up over that beautiful quad muscle. Ooh. Yeah. There's a little bit of the fat pad is, yep, right down in there. It's a little V. And femur is down at the bottom of the screen. Now I'm gonna, Run, go into a short axis view here, same thing. So running over the patella, coming proximal. Beautiful. Now you can see the condyles on either side, medial and lateral. And this is where anisotropy helps too. As I go into anisotropy, you can see the quad tendon in through here. And now we're on to it. Now you can definitely see the fibers. But if you're trying to locate it, if you rock the transducer, you'll be able to tell exactly where that is. Now, do you mind just pushing down, tightening your quad? Yeah. Kira doesn't really, well, she does have a little fluid in there. Okay, and relax. Oh, I am relaxed. Oh, okay. <laughs> Tighten it again. Okay, a little bit of fluid down in through there. This is where if you do an injection, uh, guided injection, you'll come in from the side and go in through there. But you can see the different muscles, the vastus medialis right there, beautiful. And the lateralis on the other side. And those always show up so nicely. And we're gonna go back into a long axis view. And again, there is your quad muscle. So go ahead and tighten that again. See it move. This is always fun. The part, the beautiful part of musculoskeletal ultrasound is always the movement when you can see what's going on in through there. Then generally what I'll do if there's been any pathology, I like to go back when the knee's in flexion and look again a little bit medial and run it through and lateral just to see if there's anything that got missed. There we go, and that is a knee exam. Pretty straightforward, um, easy to do, and easy to see pathologic changes in through there. So do you have, are there any questions that we can answer for you? If you do have any, you know where to contact us at Soundsports Imaging, info at soundsportsimaging.com. You can look at our website at www.soundsportsimaging.com and just remember that we provide solutions to all your ultrasound needs. See you next week. Have a great day. Thanks. Bye. -bye. Bye.